Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, we'll be discussing two methods for creating the look of aged metal. The first method we'll be covering will use spray paint and hairspray. For the sake of this video, I'm using a few off-cut pieces of lumber that I assembled to look like a metal I-beam. This technique can be applied to any surface, but if you're using a porous material, you'll want to seal it before painting to ensure the longevity of your piece. To get started, I'm going to lay down a coat of black spray paint. You can use any kind of paint for this step, I just happen to have spray paint on hand and it dries quickly. This coat doesn't have to be perfect, since we'll be applying additional layers of paint over the top, so any spots you miss will be covered in future steps. Once this layer is dried, we're going to lay down a trio of warm colors to create a rusty base. We'll start with a favorite color, Satin Cinnamon. Any rust color will do in this step. A great alternative color would be Red Primer. You just want to dust the piece with the rust color, allowing the black underlayer to shine through. You'll want to be about 15 to 20 inches away to keep from applying too heavy a coat. Next up is a light yellow color. Again, we'll be dusting the surface with paint, but this time you'll want to be about 25 to 30 inches from your piece. This color should be used sparingly. If you went too heavy with this color, don't worry, our next color will help tone down the brightness. The last of our warm colors is a dark brown. This color is used to help round out the yellow and create tonal variation. It may look strange at this point, but in the end will help make a much more interesting base for our top layer. One last dusting of our rust color to help blend it all together, and this step is done. There's no real recipe on how to apply these colors for the best look, but it's always important to consider the environment where the piece will be seen, how it's lit, and how close people will get to it when making decisions about paint. We'll give this a minute to dry before we move on to the next step, creating visual texture with water. If you subscribe to the channel, you may have seen me use this water and spray paint technique on the crackled paint video. It's a really easy way to make something look a bit more grungy and organic with very little effort. For this technique, we're going to spray down the surface, trying to create as many droplets as possible before switching to a can of black spray paint that will be dusted over the top of the surface. The paint will land on the droplets, preventing it from sticking to the surface, and can then be washed away with a bit more water. You can see along the upper edge how there's a pattern created by the water and paint that's really organic and random looking. It's a great way to distract from what the real material is and help give the appearance that it's something different. In this case, old metal. I've allowed the piece to dry, and now we're moving on to the hairspray. We're going to coat the entire surface with hairspray and allow it time to dry. You can use a hair dryer to help speed up the process. Once it's dry, we're going to coat the surface with acrylic paint. I'm using a dusty blue-gray, but you can use whatever color you want. You'll want to do this immediately after the hairspray has dried, otherwise you'll have difficulty with the next step. Grab a stiff bristle brush and your spray bottle of water and you're going to wet down the surface of your piece. What happens with this step is that the hairspray has prevented the acrylic paint from bonding to the painted surface beneath it and gives you time to scrub away the acrylic paint to expose the rust paint below. You can do as much or as little as you want and you'll want to continue to wet the surface as you go to help see how much paint has been removed. As an added bonus, the paint that's being scrubbed away starts to thin and creates a haze over the rust color that looks really authentic.
The last step is to add a bit of faded rust stains. Once again, we're going to wet down the surface, and I'm going to use a burnt umber colored paint to dab into the cracks and joints where I think rust would form. The paint will spread and drip to create a hint of rust. Sometimes it's better to suggest that there's rust than to go full out, so this is a great option if you're attempting a more subtle approach. When you're happy with the look, allow the piece to dry and then lock in your paint with a matte clear coat. Up next is our second method. This version uses glue and old coffee grounds. We're going to start by thinning out some glue with a small amount of water and painting the entire surface. You can cover the entire piece like I've done, or just apply it in the areas where you'll want there to be some texture. Once the glue is down, you'll take some of the coffee grounds, used dry grounds worked fine, and you'll sprinkle them across the surface. While you're doing this, Consider where there might be more texture and less texture. If you're looking to create more variety, you can use different types of coffee grounds, some standard drip coffee and some ground for espresso. Allow the glue to dry before moving on to coating the surface with a metallic spray paint. I'm using a weathered steel paint, but any silver metallic paint will do. Metal spray paints are great options, but they tend to look a bit flat and uniform, which doesn't really replicate metal. It is, however, a great place to start. When you have the entire piece painted and allowed it to dry, you're going to take the burnt umber color from earlier and very lightly pounce the color onto the surface. You're looking to add just a hint of color and break up the even tone of the spray paint. It's a great way to add an old greasy look. Start light and build up color as you go. It's always easier to add more than it is to take it away. When you're happy with the first color, we're going to move to a dusty blue-gray. This is the same color from the first method, and the application will be the same as the burnt umber. Very lightly pounce the color to give the metal a cold look. You can blend some of the previous color into the blue to give more variation, and use the brush to highlight the edges of the piece. Now that we have our highlights and shadows taken care of, let's add in a bit more weathering. With our surface wet down, I'm going to take our burnt umber mixed with black to add in some grunge. Always keep your spray bottle nearby to help the paint run and blend.
Once the piece is dry, the final step is to dry brush a bit of white. This will help to soften any harsh color transitions and give it a dusty look. Start light with your application and build up from there. It's really easy to go too heavy with dry brushing, so I suggest too little rather than too much. Allow it to dry, seal it with a matte clear coat, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed these two techniques. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be alerted to the next time I put out a video. And until then, happy haunting.